Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial and happy holidays. This is actually the last tutorial for the holiday season so we're getting really close and in case you haven't sent out holiday cards yet this tutorial has you covered. We are going to create this greeting card right here that you see filled with trim and score marks and we're going to make this unique snowflake right here and typeset and you'll be good to go. You can print this at home on your home printer. Uh, I've sized this to fit an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and the final card size once folded is 5 inches wide by 7 inches tall which fits any A7 sized envelope. So with that we'll get started. Uh, I'm just going to come up here and go file new and we want a letter size with 11 inches height eight and a half so the orientation is landscape we actually won't need a bleed on this one but make sure your color mode is cmyk and your raster effects which is your resolution is 300 ppi which is the regular um, high quality print resolution so hit ok and there we go all right, so we're going to need our rulers here, and in case you don't see them like I don't right now, I'm going to hit Command R or Control R on a PC, and those will bring those up. And over here in our layers palette, we're going to make sure everything stays super organized. So the first layer is going to be our trim and score marks. So I'm just going to label this trim and score. Okay, so our card is five by seven so i'm going to grab my rectangle tool i'm going to make sure there isn't a fill on it so i'm just going to hit this none but i do want a black stroke to start out with so i'm just going to double click and put in five inches wide seven inches high and hit okay all right so this will be the front side of the card on this side and this will be the back on this side so i'm just going to kind of move it around here and then i'm going to hold alt and as I'm dragging, I'm going to hold shift until I hit that center point right there. Okay, so obviously I want this centered in the whole document. And I could whip out my calculator and do some math to figure out exactly where these need to be positioned in order for all of my lines to be exactly perfectly correct. But there's a way you can cheat. And I do it all the time. So this is how I do it. Uh, I'm going to hit the M key on my keyboard. And then I'm just going to click and drag out the full size of my artboard which is eight and a half by eleven or eleven and an eight by eight and a half in this case all right so i need to make sure now i've got a rectangle right here i've got a rectangle here and a rectangle here i need to make sure these two rectangles are grouped together so i'm going to select one and then i'm going to hold shift and select the other and then i'm going to hit command g or control g on a pc just to group them together and then i'm going to rubber band select everything and then I'm just going to click once on this exterior rectangle. So whatever I do, it's going to use this as my guide. So it's going to snap based on where this is positioned. So this is these two rectangles are the ones that are going to be moving. And I'm just going to vertically align, which is horizontal align center. So you can see it's shifted. And then I'm going to vertically align center. And that didn't really move. I guess I was pretty close on that. So now this is perfectly in the middle and I didn't have to do any math, which is awesome. So I'm going to delete this background one. We're done with that. And now I'm going to just draw some guides. And so with my rulers over here, I'm just going to click and drag until I hit that. I'm going to do the same thing for my horizontal ones. Okay. So now we don't need these rectangles anymore, so we're going to get rid of them because you don't want to put rectangles. You want this to be nice and clean and seem like you didn't do it at all. You had someone make them. All right, so I'm just going to zoom in here. So I'm just hitting Command Plus, like the plus um, button, or you can hit Control Plus, and that just kind of zooms us in without grabbing the magnifying glass. All right, so in this upper corner, I'm going to hit my... Uh, line tool it's this backslash um, button on your keyboard and I'm just gonna click and as I'm dragging I'm gonna hold shift and that keeps it straight I'm just gonna do the same thing over here and then I'm holding a uh, spacebar to kind of navigate and that's my my hand tool so I'm just gonna do the same thing here click drag hold shift spacebar to move 
click, drag, hold, shift, click, drag, hold, shift. So these outer marks, like what I'm doing right here, these are going to be your trim marks. So this is where you're going to align to cut, and this middle one's going to be your score line. So that's where the card's going to be folded. So you just uh, want to do a light score on that so you can fold your card. But now you'll have guides and you won't have to have these big ugly rectangles, which no one cuts perfectly, so part of it always shows up. So these little trim marks um, make it so that doesn't happen at all. All right, so now we've got the base of our card and I'm gonna lock these. So now, now I can't move them at all. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna call this artwork. I'm actually gonna bring in the color palette that I was using over here. So we're all using the same color palette. I'm just gonna paste it down here. And feel free to make um, some colors of your own, which you can grab from. I like doing it just because it's a lot quicker than typing it in every time I can just eyedropper them. So I'll give you the color builds for these. This really, I should probably ungroup them first. All right, so this light blue color is 3001. This middle teal color is 48 for cyan, zero magenta, 19 yellow, 26 black, and this dark blue is 480051. All right, so we're gonna do all of our art first and then we're gonna set a background color and then we're gonna be done. So as you saw in the preview, we're gonna make the snowflake. So that's the next thing we're gonna do here. And you're gonna be amazed at how easy this is. So I'm just going to grab, actually, I'm gonna start with this color. So just by clicking on it, it automatically gave me this color over here, which makes it easy to go off of. And over in my shapes drop down, I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool, or you can get to it by hitting L on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna freehand this. I'm not even gonna type in any increments. Just gonna make an ellipse. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard to activate my direct select tool. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna click this bottom point right here. And when I do that, you can see these handles show up. And I'm gonna grab this handle, I'm gonna click, and then I'm just gonna drag until I hit that point so it disappears. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now you can see I've kinda of got this little teardrop shape going on, and that's perfect, that's exactly what I want. So let me zoom out a little bit, and I'm gonna rotate this. So I'm gonna right click, transform, rotate, and I'm gonna type in negative 45 degrees, which I have by default right here, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And now I need the same thing reflected over here. So I'm going to hit Alt on my keyboard, drag, and then I'm gonna hold Shift so it stays straight. Then I'm gonna right click, transform, reflect, and this needs to be a vertical reflection, which you see right here. Then I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm just gonna drag this in, I'm gonna hold Shift so it stays straight until my points kind of hit. And that, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna group these two together. So rubber band select, command G, and just because I'm a little particular, I'm gonna change my bounding box so it's more of a rectangle than a diamond. So right click, transform, reset bounding box. Perfect. All right, so now I just need one more of these, so I'm gonna hit Alt, then hold Shift to keep it straight, and then I'm gonna scale down, and I wanna do it uniformly, so I'm gonna hold Shift, and then I'm gonna scale. And that looks good. And then I'm just gonna grab my ellipse tool again, hold shift and I'll make it a circle because everything scales uniformly when you hold shift. All right, there's my circle. And now I want all these aligned together. So I'm a rubber band select, then up here, I'm gonna click this horizontal align center. Now everything's aligned. And obviously I want this one, this middle one to be my dark blue color. So I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard so I can eyedropper it. Make sure it's selected before you do that. And now I'm gonna select everything, Command G, and here's the fun part. All right, with our shape selected, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see everything. I'm gonna come over here to my Appearance palette, and if you don't see this over here, you can get to it by going Window Appearance, and it'll show up. I'm gonna to toggle down this little FX icon right here, and then I'm gonna to go to Distort and Transform, and click on Transform, and now, I'm gonna hit preview so we can see everything that we do as we do it. I'm not gonna to touch anything for the scale because I want the exact same scale all the way through as I repeat around. I'm going to, under the move part, I'm gonna enter in negative one inch. And then for vertical, I'm gonna type in 0.42 inches. 
and this needs to rotate as it goes around so I'm rotating 45 degrees and I need eight copies of that rotation and now if I click anywhere you can see something really cool happens so I'm gonna hit OK and there's our snowflake but if I move just the top one you can see they all kind of move together and I can't edit these shapes individually or select them individually and I want to be able to do that because I want to put a circle in the middle and I want everything to align to it vertically and horizontally so in order to separate everything you, all you have to do is go to object expand appearance and now they're all expanded and I can actually go a step further and ungroup it but I don't want to ungroup it just yet I want to make a circle right in the center so I'm going to hold my shift key and I want a little one okay so I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to hit my horizontal line center and then vertical line center and now it's right in the middle and I'm going to group everything together by command G or control G on a PC and then I'm just going to scale it down I'm holding shift as I scale so it scales uniformly and that's looking really nice and there's another way you can cheat because I'm kind of eyeing this because I don't have a center guide and I could draw a center guide or I can just draw a rectangle right here that's just the width of this part of the card and if I select both of these and then just click once on this rectangle I can make sure that that's vertically aligned right here and then I can get rid of this all right, so now I need to put in my type. So I'm just gonna hit the T key and I'm gonna type in happy holidays in all lowercase. Come over to my characters palette and the two fonts that I'm using are 100% free and I'm gonna leave the links for them right below uh, in the item description so you can download them super easily. So this first font I'm using is called Novacento Sans Wide. And I want 150 for the tracking which is right here. And then I'm just gonna scale it up. I'm holding shift as I scale. Always hold shift. All right, and I want this color to be the dark blue. Let me scale a little more. That's good. All right, and then you can put your family's name on it. So it seems very custom just for you instead of a generic card. So I'm gonna hit the T key again and I'm just gonna type from, oops the smiths and this font is called allura a-l-l-u-r-a -L -L and i don't want any tracking on this so zero and now i'm just going to scale it up a little but still it's kind of tiny i'm going to make it the teal color i'm hitting i on my keyboard Hit the All right, so that's our card. And now we just need to drop that um, background color in. So I'm going to create a new layer here by hitting this icon right here. And then I'm just gonna click and drag this layer all the way to the bottom because we want it to appear behind your trim marks. Because if we put it on top of the trim marks, you're not gonna be able to see where you need to trim and score. And that would defeat the purpose. All right, so I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna draw a big rectangle, the size of the artboard. And then I hit I, to grab my eyedropper, click on that background color, hit V to deselect. And now I'm gonna lock this layer so I can't move it around. And that's your finished card. All you have to do is print it out on your home printer and then grab an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. I love using a utility knife and a ruler and score, trim, fold, and mail piece of cake. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial or design freebie every single Tuesday on my website, every-tuesday.com. Thanks.